Orbit Note is great for working with PDFs, portable document formats. Now you may use them in business or research. A lot of papers are in PDF format that you download, especially journals. This enables you to annotate them so you can color code information you want, extract those colors, add notes, add push pins, read them back, even split and merge different documents. So it's great for business and education. Now the first two boxes we got drag and drop a PDF here or choose a file or I can use Google Drive. Now use Google before you know you get a free drive and Google Docs that you can work with so a lot of people upload their documents safely into Google Drive so I'll do both. But first I want to upload something from my local drive so I'm going to select choose file. And I've got a report here that I was playing around with earlier that's got different annotations on it already that I've worked with. Top left hand corner by the way, if you don't see this little option, if I click the tab, if you just see that and you want to see what pages you've got, click the tab here and you can work with all your pages down here on the left. Bottom right is your best option. Can you see there's 214 pages and on page 10? You can type in there and change your page quickly if you want or if you want just go down manually. Whatever you want to do as you're going through it. The other good option while we're down here quickly is a little search option. So if you're looking for a keyword or a bit of information, so I'm going to put combustion in. And do you notice it says here now on the right 20 of 32 matches. So I'm on a 20th match of the 32 because I'm currently in page 10. So what I could do here at the right here, I could click highlight all. So I can go through them quickly that way. Or I might just match case. So I click match case or the whole word. So that way I can jump through information quickly what I'm looking for. It's great when you're working with PDF documents. Unless you've got Acrobat Reader, it's a bit difficult to work and manipulate PDFs unless you convert them into a Word format. So let's work with this document. I'm going to come up here. First option, click it, it will turn pink, is click to speak. So wherever I click on the document, it will read back from. So I'm going to left click on here. Between the Lagrangian and the Eulerian PDFs. In these works, the presentation is strictly tailored. And click the rectangle one here point to stop PDF it. Descriptions I'm going to turn that off. Because I want to change the voice quickly. So on the right hand corner, go to ellipsis. Tap on it. And I want you to select settings. Currently it's in general at the top there. Just to let you know, you can actually go to dark or light mode. But can you select speech? I've currently got UK Scottish Fiona that I like. I'm going to go to UK Serena and click test voice speed. You can drag that to the left to slow that test down. Voice touch speed. I'll leave this toggled here because it's continuous test speech. It won't keep stopping then and click save. So there's your first option. Second option here will play back from the top of the document no matter where you are. So if I click play. 10 J P. Mine and click stop e. and that will play back from the top of the document that you're working with rather than using the speak one. Now next option is the highlighter. Tap on it for me, it will turn pink. Now the highlights are going to up to you what you want highlights to represent. So I'm going to come to document. I'm going to highlight a little paragraph there make that pink. And you might have it read back or you might be reading it manually and you go down and you highlight a bit of information. Maybe you're doing research, you need a quote. And then I can go down to a different page. And again, I can carry on adding highlights. So let's highlight that equation and choose a color. And let's do one more. So once you've highlighted annotated stuff, you can wipe stuff off you don't want by using the option here, clear highlights. So if I was to highlight that again, up to there and clear it. And it's gone. So once you've highlighted your information, come up, turn it off, and click the button next to it. Collect highlights. It's up to you how you want to sort them when it extracts them to Google Docs. For example, you might want them to keep the same position of the highlights that are in the document pages. That way you leave it on position. Or you might want them just listed in the actual colours. So I'm going to leave them in the colour format because I've got some highlighting done earlier in the document and it will put them in the order of colours rather than position of the document. Click OK and remember you can always untick if you don't want the pinks or different colours. 
give it a little while to upload to Google Docs. And there they are. There's all my colours there that I did in the order of the colours. Now remember, if you want to get rid of the colours, quite easy to do. Highlight them. Come to Google Docs, tap on it, and select None. Tap back off. So that way you can get rid of the colours that you don't want. And also remember, you can still work with this Google Docs, because you might actually want it in a Word document, or a different format. We'll just go to File, and Download. So that way you can download to Microsoft Word, or other formats that you might want. So I'm going to close that tab. So that's working with annotations and colours. The next option is shapes. Let's turn it on. So it could be a number of reasons you want to use shapes. Again, the choice is yours. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to select a line. And if I tap on it, you see it's turned red. Line thickness, 5. Line colour, I'm going to go for a blue. And I don't want to fill colour. So now, if I hold the left button, I can track lines. And again, you can use that for so many different options, depending on what you're doing as well. Now, a quick point, if you turn it off, the shapes, and I click back on one of those shapes, you can see it's highlighted it. I can manipulate them by dragging them to any size I want. Or I can hit the delete key on the keyboard, or hit the eraser button, and tap on what I don't want with a left click. Remember to turn it off again, because you can't use any other option while the eraser's on. The next option is T for text. So let's have a little tap. Now, nothing happens at the moment, as you can see, but when I tap on the actual document, a box would appear. Now I can start tapping text that might be relevant to that document. I'll make something up. And again, I can click play. I can expand or minimize the text well, or it. even change the color if I need that to stand out a bit. I hold the left button, drag that where I want. So what's what happens when I click off it? You've now added the text and click back on it. Maybe I need to drag that up a bit further and click off it. So that way you can add your own text and notes within the document you're working with as well. Again, you can click on that and click trash if you don't want that as well. Or you can add multiple notes by clicking. So I'm going to get rid of that with trash and turn it off. Now, push pin. Works the same way when you add notes, but it's hidden in a pin, and that could be a great option for stuff that you just want to hide. Could be quite good for your vision as well to give you little pointers, couldn't it? In a research paper. So I'm going to click push pin, and again, you get the same option come up like we did with text. And again, you can type something in there. And again, you can change your colour, play it back. So I just give that a, a mauve colour. Hold the left button and you can drag that where you want. But the difference is, when I tap off it, it's a little pin. So you can access that pin whenever you want, but just by tapping back on it, you might want to move it somewhere else. Or trash it. So I'm just going to left click off it and leave that pin there. Remember to turn it off again at the top. How about adding an image that might be relevant? That's not part of that PDF, we can do that as well. Click on insert image. I've got from my computer or Google Drive. Let's do Google Drive. Uh, let's use the Flow PNG there image. So I'm going to tap on it and click select. It will add it to the center of the PDF, but if you hold the left button, you can drag that to where you want it. So I'm going to drag it probably at the top there and do a left click to set it in. I can make that smaller by dragging the corners as well left click to set that now if you don't want it tap back on it click the delete key on the keyboard as i said earlier you can use the eraser button but i'm going to leave that there as a demonstration now last of all is insert signature on here now it's important to remember when you insert a signature in your document you need to download the pdf or it won't save it all this annotation and push pins we're adding are saved automatically so when you reopen it but it doesn't save the signature so you've got to download it when you've finished your document so i'm going to click on it and i'm just going to make up a signature and now i want to insert it into my document so it could be a business document for example now 
right in the middle you hold the left button you can drag it where you want and left click to set it in now remember what I said earlier you need to down if you want to save the document with the signature you need to download it and you can download it by using the download button here and that will download it to your local drive or you can upload it to your Google Drive and select if you don't it won't save the digital signature so just a little pointer on that one next click the ellipsis and let's go back to your dashboard let's have a look at split and merge you can split and merge different PDF documents which is really handy for research or business that you might be working with so again I can choose from my local computer or my Google Drive so I'm going to select local and I'm going to open up the reports one again got a few pages there so it's going to take a little while to upload and there's all my pages there now if I select split toggle see these boxes appear so now I can now split in this PDF into different sections if I want so I might select for example up to page 5 tap on it and you can see it's now numbered it as one section page 5 so if I was to decide I want to do another three pages click the box that will be name two so that way I can now split those documents into five and three and you go through all your documents scrolling through and deciding what you want to split so let's do one more up to 13 so I've got three sections so now if I actually press download button it will download those three different sections and if I open it up I'll now have three different sections so if I go to my download folder then they all are. So it's a great way to split different documents. Click close. Now I'm going to turn split off. Maybe you just want to drag specific pages out randomly. So I might go page nine, I want that. Drag that to the bottom. Page seven maybe. And page 14. So you can drag individual pages out if you want as well. And once you drag loads of pages out, then you can split them into different sections again if you wish. Let's drag one more out. And then I could rename that. To what I want. And I've got an option. I can download it to my computer. If I click upload, I can even upload it to my Google Drive and select. And there it is. So it's great options, as I said before, about working with your PDFs. I'm going to close that. So you could technically merge as well. Drop a page here to start a new PDF. If I come here and click Computer and choose another file. And if I scroll down, you can see I've now added another PDF document. So now I could start merging them. So I might actually go from this PDF document. I don't want to join it with that because that's relevant. And maybe I need one from there. So now if you look at the bottom here, I've got now important ones that I could merge. Just by dragging and dropping. And if I wanted to, I could split them again that way. Or I could upload or even download to my computer. So yeah, the split and merge is a great option working with various different PDF documents. Last of all, go to image to PDF. This will take an image like a PNG, JPEG and convert it to a PDF for you to work with in Orbit Note. Again, we've got two options up here, local computer or Google Drive. So I'm going to go Google Drive and I'm going to click that PNG document there and select that's just an image as you can see but then I can work with it by renaming it and I can choose where I want to save it to so I could even download it to my computer trash it or maybe that I want to rotate it or get a bigger view of it so if you're working for a document like a JPEG with text in your PNG you can convert it into a PDF to work with tap off that so if I click scan to drive it's going to save to my Google Drive for me and select 
and there it is it will upload to your google drive for you to work with you see top right there's no text in that document it will let you know anyway but it will ask you whether you want to scan and look for text if needed so i'm just going to put no thanks there's a quick overview of using orbit notes a lot more to it but that should get you up and running thanks for watching